Okay, so uh, this is the fourth video on uh, limits in the LP space, and I just want to apologise in this video for the third video that I made. Uh, in the third video, I completely overcomplicate potentially what we need to do here. I say that this, if this is going to work, then we have to have something like this working, and that is true. Uh, but it was there's a simpler way of doing this, which is to say that if this is going to be true, then it implies instantly that for all r is an element of the natural numbers, the modulus of x m r minus x r to the power of p has to be strictly less than epsilon over p. Because if the whole sum of them over what r is equal to 1 to infinity is going to add up to being less than epsilon over p, then for whatever r, and I'll put use a different number now, so I'll say for all i is an element of the natural numbers, uh, for all, or a different letter rather, I'll say if I pick a single one of those, so if I pick say i is equal to 4, then I take uh, xm4 minus x4 to the power of p, that has to be strictly less than epsilon over p, because if it was greater than or equal to epsilon over p, then that would make instantly this sum greater than epsilon over p. So this being less than epsilon over p instantly implies that this is less than epsilon over p, which we can reduce down to the fact that xmi minus xi has to be less than epsilon, and that has to hold for all i is an element of the natural numbers. Now, basically, this argument about the fact that all of these term-wise sequences converging then means that I can find a point in each of these term-wise sequences such that if I go to that point, or I'll pick a term beyond that point in the term y sequence, then I can get this statement to hold, basically. But I can't uh, for every single one of these term-wise sequences, you'll get a different n, basically. You'll get n1, n2, so after n1, it'll hold that, um, It'll, it will hold that um, all that if you go beyond m1, uh, if you pick any term in the first term y sequence beyond x m11, uh, so x m11 will be somewhere in this first term y sequence. If you pick any point beyond it, then I can get uh, the, uh, then it, the distance between it and the first term of this term wise limit sequence will be less than epsilon. Similarly, I can do that for x2, uh, sorry, for, I can do it for the second term wise sequence, I can come up with n2, I can do it for the third term wise sequence, I can do it for absolutely all of them. But uh, if this was going to hold up here, if this had even a shot of a chance of being less than epsilon over p, this would have to be true for absolutely all i as an element of the natural numbers. I would have to be able to find you a big M such that this whole for all the natural numbers and basically I can't necessarily find uh, a number that is bigger than all of these uh, m1, n2, m3s etc. And I want to stress that this being true does not even imply that this is this is true. It's just a necessary condition. If this is going to even have a shot at being true, then this has to hold. Uh, whereas it was a case that if this if this if this condition that I originally had was true, then it would hold that that was true. But uh, this is a cleverer one to do. This is a simpler one to do. If this because the problem with my original um, original demonstration was that. The fact that you couldn't do this didn't necessarily contradict that you could do this, because I could have come up with some uh, some other clever ploy. The reason this is better is that if this is true, this has to be true, whereas if this is true, it did not imply that this had to be true. It, uh, what's strange about it is that if this was true, it did imply this was true, whereas if this is true, it doesn't still doesn't necessarily imply this is true. However, that doesn't matter. What's important is that if this was going to be true, it would imply instantly that this had to be true for all i is an element of the natural numbers. And I cannot necessarily find you uh, a big M, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if you take a, a sequence x little m and ask what is uh, what is the modulus of the uh, ith term of that nth sequence minus uh, the ith term of the term-wise limit sequence, I cannot necessarily assure you that that's going to be less than epsilon. Uh, for all i is an element of the natural numbers. I just can't do it, basically. And the reason is that you can't necessarily get a bounding on this set of uh, m1, n2, m3s. You can make it true for all of the term-wise sequences individually, but you can't necessarily find a point where it's true for absolutely all of the term-wise sequences.